This morning we come to chapter 20 of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Now towards the end of chapter 19 we have the battle which is referred to elsewhere as Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon. Not something that is future, but something that is past. I know the whole world wonders after the doctrine of millennialism and premillennialism and all the other millennialisms rather than Christianity. The world of professing Christendom. However, it cannot change what has been, and it cannot change what is, and it cannot change what shall be. It is fixed. Fixed. And we see the armies of heaven overcoming the armies of hell. And of course, when the scriptures refer of hell, it refers of hell in two different concepts, spiritual concepts. One is the lower hell, the hell of hells, and of course, hell where Christ went. That is the kingdom of the devil. That is hell upon earth. Okay. The earthy side of the world. Which is reflected in the natural side. And Christ in the hypostatic union descended as Paul declares descended and he took captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He took that which was already captive captivity. In other words bound captivity once for all forever. And it is in with the word finished. It is finished. Every minutiae of what Christ came to perform, he performed and he finished. All right. And in the close of chapter 19, we see the spiritual state of the enemy. Past, present and future. Okay, so we come to chapter 20. And it is looking backwards and it is looking forwards. Looking backwards to Calvary again and looking forwards to the end of time. And I saw an angel, verse 1, come down from heaven. An angel come down from heaven. I, the angel of the covenant, Jesus Christ, he came down from out of heaven. Heaven from God to do the work of God on behalf of the children of God and the justice and the judgment of God and the law of God and of truth and of righteousness. He came down 
God contracted to a man and he became, sorry, contracted to a span and became man. He came down as an angel. He did not come down as one vengeful, but as an angel, the angel of the covenant. Yet another term that refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, to the only begotten Son of God, because the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is another term. And is the only begotten Son of God in the flesh. The only begotten Son of God. The Son of Man. The ultimate man. John sees him coming down from heaven because John is the one that is telling the heavenly story here. No one else. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He had the key. He took the key from the very hand of the devil. He had the key to the bottomless pit. When Adam sinned, there, well, prior to his sinning, the bottomless pit contained all the evil known to man and the chief of all evil sat on top of it he couldn't unlock it all the lefties were down there and he couldn't unlock it how to unlock the bottomless pit the world was perfect it was paradise the Garden of Eden. There in that part of the world was the Garden of Eden, reflecting the Eden of God which is above. There was no sin in the world, therefore there was no evil spirits in the world. Everything was pristine. And Adam had perfect understanding and perfect wisdom, and so did Eve. Everything was perfect. And yet, through it all, imperfect. Because it was not as perfect as God. And so, there was, infinitely, that which would change. Because man, intrinsically, is a chain thing changeling he stood there as the greatest and the only man upon earth a representative of the human race right. one race and of course one language which language of course was diversified when those who were building the city of Babel, their language was confused. They built the tower of Babel. That was complete. And they came to finish off the city that they were in building. That was in building. And God came down. And confuse the language. Confused the language. Christ. Through Calvary. Took back. Because he's the second Adam. The first Adam. Forfeited the key. To the bottomless pit. He held the key. Of obedience to God and once he disobeyed God 
the key of obedience came to the devil. And what did the devil immediately do? Did he sit around? Did he contemplate what he was going to do? No, because he'd already settled upon what he was going to do. And he couldn't help himself because he is what he is. He took the key of disobedience and he unlocked that pit and every evil spirit came out of that pit. It did not they did not come down from heaven. They are not in heaven. As the goats and the rest of them declare. They were in the pit. Heaven is not a pit. Heaven is heaven. And all the smoke came out of the pit. Smoke of darkness, of ignorance. And of rebellion. In every evil way. The darkness of that hell that forms the kingdom of the devil. But Christ, you see, is the second Adam. He fulfilled the law of God, that which Adam broke, and took back, therefore, the key. He didn't lock all the evil spirits back into the pit yes the chains of darkness he indeed strengthened sealed no breaking of them and no breaking of the cords I the devil and his armies went forth and said let us break asunder the chains and cords that bind us and they were thwarted at Calvary. When Christ stood there upon that field of battle. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And he did so. He did so and he took back the key. By obedience. And what did he do? Hmm? He cast the chief of all evil, the captain of all evil, into a bottomless pit. And the great chain he was bound by. Hmm? He came down, you see, with a great chain to do that which would be done and Christ did it. He bound Satan. Right. Verse 2. And he laid hold of the dragon. No man can lay hold of the dragon. Oh the fiery serpent. The dragon. One of the various names that depict what the devil is. He's a dragon. Going about like a roaring lion if you like. As the scriptures declare. Seeking whom he may devour. Hmm? And he laid hold on the dragon. That old serpent. You see the subtle one. In the garden. The serpent. Creeping along. Oh yes. To achieve the ends evil will take false well piety into their hands and create false piety smiles smoothness words like oil and when they get upset they fire the fiery darts of their indignation against the truth Against those whom indeed perceive to be their enemies. But they're not the enemies of God. They're the enem enemies of a godless people, individuals, devils. 
nations, kindreds, and tongues. Against the powers that be. Those that are established in heavenly places by man. Under the rule of God. You see, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers in heavenly places. It's a spiritual warfare that we are engaged in as soldiers of Jesus Christ. Hmm? Against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Aye. Rulers of this world. Rulers. Let's never forget it. Rulers. And then we come down in degrees to the common man. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And bound him a thousand years. You know, we had the likes of that blasphemer, that irreligious, evil, mound of evil. Billy Sunday, William Sunday. Okay, he used to put on a theatrical performance in his day in the 1800s. And he used to fight the devil. Oh, he used to stand on the stage and put his fists up and fight the devil. Making out that he himself was more than conquerors and that his audience was more than conquerors. And that's all that was sitting before him, an audience that he was playing to. No, you have to be very, very careful. The devil is still a powerful fiend. Very powerful fiend. And look at the devilishness that comes out of the mouths of the wicked. Especially in high places. Enticing. Alluring. Magnetic. And we're so easily drawn in. It's as though our ears, they've got hold of our ears. And pull us in. Those in high places, especially so, what is it? What is it that they have but evil, pure evil, that they can take hold of our ears, of our understanding? And once they speak, we automatically latch on to them. What is it? And then we betake ourselves and say, hang on a minute, that's, that's, a, that's a pervert. That's a pervert. He perverts or she perverts everything that they touch. Become cankered. And we stand back. But the world, the vast majority of the world doesn't. They get drawn in by these magnetic personalities. And he has. And he laid hold of the dragon. That old serpent which is the devil and Satan. And bound him a thousand years. There is no literal thousand years. There are no six months. There is no four months. There are no three months. No months whatsoever. Literal. One day is a thousand years. It passes that fast. The years are known to heaven. Or settled in heaven. And they're not the years that we have here. Because they are. Heavenly metaphors. Referring. To times and seasons. Under heaven. It says as a thousand. As a day. Is a thousand years. And how long. Is the day of grace. But a thousand years. It's one day. One day, but not a literal day. Beginning at Calvary, AD, <clears throat> replacing BC, and there's no going back. 
There is no going back. It's only going forwards, down and down and down, bound in a thousand years to a set time. And of course this time illustrates here the full day of grace. As we shall see as the scriptures continue on to reveal themselves, to instruct us as they are laid before us. They having been settled in heaven. Verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit. Bottomless. Down and down and down. And down and down and down. And there is no end. Cast us not into the deep. Said the devils of the Gadarene. Cast us not into the deep. Torment us not before our time. They bowed the knee to Jesus Christ. They accepted Jesus Christ as their maker and their sovereign. They didn't appeal to their father, the devil, but to Jesus Christ. Because their father, the devil, can do nothing. And the evil spirits there intrinsically knew full well and feared the Lord Jesus Christ and let those vagabonds who say that Christ shall reign for a thousand years let them be dismissed if all evil recognises Jesus Christ as the reigning sovereign their maker and their creator and sustainer of all things should we not intrinsically of course we do